before we start today, Goldie's back. Smells good or refreshed, back from Raplapla, with an adorable diagnosis and complete prescription. All right, Goldie, take your place. After 40 years of dormancy, Montreal is exploding back onto the scene with hundreds of kilometers of transit projects. But with billions of dollars being discussed, will they actually happen? I'm opening my spreadsheet of all Montreal's transit projects to take them in order from most likely to happen to uh, Pink Line. Woo! Sick burn, if you're a nerd. To start off, let's have a look at the projects that currently have shovels in the ground. Coming in as the most likely yet most boring thing on the list is the Cote Vertue garage. The broccoli of transit projects. It's cost effective, it's good for you, but this is infrastructure so behind the scenes that the public can't even see it. The garage sits underground on the orange line at Cote Vertue. It stores empty trains and can fire them onto the line when it's rush hour. You know that glorious feeling when an empty, fresh train shows up at a crowded platform? That's precisely what this is going to do. The garage also contains a maintenance facility for the new uh, Azura trains. I guess those are completely made by Alstom now. At 500 million, it's cost effective for a subterranean project and should be completed next year. It was going to be completed this year, but then along came the bad thing. You'll know when it's nearing completion because Cote Vertu is uh, going to be closed for three months in the project's final phase to connect all of the hard work that they've been doing. CBC will head down there and a local will be like, I don't like the station being closed, but it will be nice to have a less crowded metro. Uh, that's great, thank you for your feedback. Well worth the inconvenience for anyone who is going to be taking the orange line during rush hour for the next 100 years. The REM, probably the biggest single mass transit build in Canadian history. It's a fully automated 67 kilometer long transit system with above ground viaducts and below ground portions in densely populated urban areas. It's almost like I've said this before. The project is currently coming in at $6.5 billion, around $100 million per kilometer which is pretty cheap for now. It connects the West Island, Deux Mountain, and the airport to downtown and Bossard, and should be finished in 2024, unless something happens. Last chance, SNC. The third project which currently has shovels in the ground is the bus rapid transport system on Pinot. This runs 13 kilometers from St. Martin and Laval to St. Catherine. It is a dedicated route with frequent buses live timetables and large comfortable shelters that are spaced out further than regular bus stops. It's also using location detection technology to give automatic priority at traffic lights. So a bus on this route is gonna fly down at 10 minutes faster than a regular bus. A nice thing to, about this project was the different government agencies work together to do all the work on the road at once and save on costs. None of that, what the fuck? They just dug up this road shit that you see all the time on projects in Montreal because the pipe guys didn't talk to the road guys. So for a cost of $400 million, we're getting a full change out of sewers and everything on the road, not just a bus system. It all works out to about $30 million per kilometer and will be completed in 2022. Now, if you're anything like me, you think buses, lame, 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 lame. No, not lame, a sign of good government. Buses are not glamorous, but incredibly practical. First of all, they're so cheap, the cheapest to build. How much? How far you want to go? No, how much for the whole bus? Huh? Is $340 enough? Lady, you cut yourself a bus. Next bus, please. Todos para afuera. The route can be planned, built, and extended in a time frame that nothing else can compete with because we're so much better at building roads compared to tunnels and viaducts and automated, you know, train systems and things that other countries have to ship us equipment for, you know, we can do roads. The buses in them can be used on other routes. Buses are actually very environmentally friendly and they can be electric too, if you want to increase that. They are a high value proposition, the Honda Civic of Transit. No one cares about them. But until you get subway levels of traffic, they're almost always the best choice. Do you really want to see your government going out and buying a BMW? In fact, this particular road used to have a bus rapid transit system on it in the 90s, which was successful until there was an uh, incident. What well, was it? So it ran counter flow to traffic, kind of like those um, cycle lanes. But uh, just like those cycle lanes, pedestrians would forget to look both ways. And uh, when you get hit by a bike, you know, it's chiclets. 
but when you get hit by a bus, boom! <laughs> so, so inappropriate. Sorry. Anyway, sorry, dead person. Unfortunately, the person who got killed by a bus uh, was the wife of a bus driver, and that definitely played into why the route was immediately discontinued. You know, it's like, hey, hey bus drivers, who wants to drive the route that uh, killed Steve's wife? <laughs> Looking back though, they made the mistake of shelving the route instead of just installing fences. It basically got mothballed and forgotten. They ended up pulling up all the stations. We're basically putting everything in back now, mm. but, you know, doing it properly. It in back now. This whole project says competent, rational, economic decisions were made and government communication happened to save us all a bunch of money, which is nice. Hopefully it runs for 20 years, the population grows, and then the whole thing gets upgraded to a metro line. Montreal has one project that's pretty close to shovel ready. The shovel, the shovels, it's like this, it's vibrating. The Blue Line extension is moving from planning to construction in 2021. So this project extends the line from St. Michel out to Anjou, with tracks for moving and storing trains um, going as far as Boro on the other side of the highway. They're probably gonna put a station there at some point. The link is five kilometers uh, long underground with five new stations. The cost of the project is projected to be $800 million per kilometer. Oh yeah, now you understand why we have to build buses. I thought it would be interesting to see how far we could build other things for the price of the Blue Line extension. So this is the distance that the Metro extension goes. Based on the REM, this is how far automated light rail goes. And for the same amount of money, this is how far BRT goes. A kilometer of subway underground in Montreal seems to be at least 25 kilometers of BRT. And we can build BRT like that. Also remember that for that price, the BRT is fixing the sewers and all the other stuff on that street. Getting back to the Blue Line, I'd also say that it's only with the completion of this extension that the blue line even really needed to be a subway line. It's kind of infamously a quiet line, right? It probably could have been a BRT this whole time, or should have been a lot longer when it was first built in the 1980s. With these projects, I kind of see it as a go big, like the REM, or go home situation. If you're gonna get a giant tunnel boring machine shipped in and set up project offices and get billions of dollars of financing, build something big and make use of the economies of scale. Basically say, look, if you're gonna do this on time and on budget, Hey, ooh, more contracts, more <laughs> control. <contra> oh. <laughs> Hungry fella. I hope they start lining up bigger projects to immediately transition the people who are working on this project over to before they pack up their shit and go home. But a lot of these projects are currently just a little bit too far down the list. I guess we'll see if post COVID there's this push to get projects moving along quicker as a uh, Keynesian economic strategy to fix the hole that we've dug. Dig a hole to fix the hole we dug. The completion date for this is currently 2026. And it's part of the reason why the garage is being built on the orange line to handle the extra passengers that are going to be loaded onto it. The frequency of trains is going to be increased and some work may be done to ensure that the new cars can run on that line. Oh, gonna have to stop you there. Hey guys, it's uh, Pages Editor here. Um, he's about to spend the next 20 minutes yammering on about the pink line and proportional representation and calling your grandpa a slut. Uh, two times, actually. Uh, so I'm gonna have to cut off the video here for today and come back to you next time with all of the potential projects that are being discussed in the Montreal area. Pretty long video, so see you then. Mm, mm, mm. I hate working for this guy. <laughs>